working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, Win FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Working For You, the weekly radio program where the people of St. Kitts and Nevis can interact with their government and where they can be provided with credible information about how the government is working for the people. Last week, we had on the program Mr. Edward Gift, the controller of the Inland Revenue Department. And Mr. Gift unequivocally stated that the government has not introduced any new taxes, despite some of what is being said. Today, I am very fortunate to have in my midst the Director of the Department of Agriculture, Mr. Melvin James, who is going to share with us, among other things, Open Day 2016 and some of what the Department of Agriculture is doing. Mr. James, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Williams. It's my pleasure to be here to share with the viewing and listening public information about Open Day and maybe to talk generally about what's happening in agriculture and our vision and you know where we intend to take things over the next couple of years. Mr. James, I'm not going to tally for too long. I'm going to get the ball rolling. So could you tell us about Open Day. This is an annual event that is planned by the Department of Agriculture. Yes, it is. And um, I find that it's very timely at this time because Open Day is actually on the 21st and 22nd. That is to say, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. The venue is at the grounds of the Department of Agriculture. I do hope that most of our locals are very well aware of it already. We, we've done a lot of media promotion, many different forms, and we, we also have banners around Bastia. And so I do hope that the, the information about Open Day is not at all new. Safe to say that um, it will have some elements of what we are accustomed to in the past, and we're also going to have some new components for our Open Day. And um, I'm inviting the general public, the schools, um, everyone to, to come out. We, we're going to begin at 8. And um, one of the differences is that we are extending. Normally, we finish around 4 o'clock on average. But we want to go right up into the evening this time, 6, perhaps 7 o'clock. So the, the working public, I'm letting you know now that you don't have to hurry. You come after work, we'll be there, we'll be waiting for you, we'll be able to entertain and inform you. And so we, we're looking forward to a great time for Open Day this year. Now, Mr. James, the theme for Open Day 2016 is it's quite interesting and perhaps uh, I can say timely. It is engendering resilience to deal with global realities. What is the rationale behind this theme? Interesting. Um, first of all, let me take it from the very end, global realities. We, a lot of people, you know, we, come, we often look at, um, we often discuss climate change. We, we tend to, when, when we talk about adversities, we put it in the context of what's happening with climate change. And that is true. That is very timely. That is very important because um, 
we know that um, there are unseasonal rains, unpredictable rainfalls, unpredictable drought, dry periods. There have been increased incidence of pests and diseases. And all of that affects production, especially in the context that our production is mostly what you call open field. Um, it's subject to the elements of the weather as opposed to protected agriculture. So, um, yes, but we said global realities because we are admitting, we are acknowledging that our issues and our challenges are not only related to climate change, but we're looking at other um, global factors that affect us. For example, free trade. Um, you know, in the past, a lot of our islands, including St. Kitts, we had a lot of protection. We, we, we had special, different, and preferential treatments. A lot of those treaties, a lot of those arrangements have gone and are going out of the window. So that it, it, it's a new playing field that, that we have to, to react in. And so while climate change is important, I wanted to look at the wider picture. So that is why we said global realities. Now, the resilience. We know um, resilience, the flexibility, the ability to recover, the, to come to the fore. And therefore, the, the, the theme is admitting that we have the awakening, the inspiration, the creativity, as it were, to deal with all of these that I've mentioned before, all of these adversities, uh, sorry, adversities and not go under, not, not capitulate. In fact, even do better than survive. We want to be able to succeed. And that is why we want to say that from the beginning, we are aware of these and the plans and pro programs we're putting in place take all of these into, into bear. And it is only at that way that we are in fact believing and knowing that having looked at the total picture, we can move forward from here. Now, this year, Open Day, seems to coincide with Earth Day. What is the... Um, connection between having open day, marrying, if I'm to say that, with Earth Day, because Earth Day is on the 22nd. Yes. Am I correct? You are correct. And uh, I would accept your analogy. I, I think we're, we're <laughs> proud to be married to, to Earth Day because there is a synergy. And um, in fact, sustainable agriculture um, speaks to one's ability to recognize and to be cognizant of the, the realities as it relates to pollution and so on. So um, what's happening is that Earth Day, the, the, the local Earth Day committee, they're celebrating an entire week of activities and um, they have some of the activities on their own at separate locations and so on. But, but Earth Day itself is on Friday the 22nd Open day is for the two days, Thursday and Friday. And so we found that it was a good idea for us to come together on, on the Friday. And so they're going to be with us at the department. They'll, they'll be having displays and to be with ours. They're going to be there for both days. And, um, you know, it is so wonderful because, first of all, agriculture is one of those entities that can and do contribute to some levels of, of, of pollution. For example, in the livestock sector, especially if you have a lot of cattle, um, in those countries where, where you have large um, cattle farms, the, 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 there is a methane, a significant amount of methane, one of those, um, those, those gases which affects the environment, which, which leads to warming and so on. So Again, other things in agriculture like Nitrogen fertilizers, if you use excessive fertilizers, then they, they cause a change in the pH in the soil. They make it more difficult for the normal plants to survive. So agriculture has a role, just like it's not just industry, it's not just the homes that, that pollute or that offsets the balance. But um, we must be honest and fair that we ought to be careful in agriculture as well, or else we can contribute significantly even by soil erosion and soil compaction. So what we're doing in teaming up, we're saying that we acknowledge that there can be issues and that we need to farm in such a way that 
we minimize those things. When we say sustainable agriculture, then we're saying that we recognize what is needed to be done to reduce the adverse effects. And we believe we've done a relatively good job in St. Kitts. And that is why we can team up with Earth Day and say, well, okay, let's we're on board. The idea of, for example, one of their goals is to plant a lot of trees. We have trees which will make available and show that, yes, we are about keeping St. Kitts green, as green as possible, so that um, we would have sustainable development for now and the future. Now, I mentioned earlier that Open Day is an annual event. How many years um, in terms of Open Day have we had? And could you tell us this year what is different about Open Day than the other years? We've been doing Open Day for quite a while. In fact, this year is our 23rd anniversary. We're looking towards our 25th shortly. And obviously for the 25th, we want to even make it very big, very different. This year is going to be good. This year is, is going to be very lively. Um, we have, in addition to our teaming up with Earth Day that I just mentioned, um, some of the things that are going to be different here is that uh, we're going to be having on display, again, our sensitivity to, to green energy. Um, we, we, we have displays on um, like solar, solar energy, um, alternative sources of energy, wind and solar especially. And this is for the farmer's consideration. They, they may have small pumps that they, that they need to operate. They may, there may be fixtures that they need to do lighting and heating. And they, there are small home units that are assembled here that um, can be used as, as alternative sources of energy. And this is something they, would wa they may want to consider, especially if you're way up in the hills where you are away from the normal diesel supplies. And so that is one of the things that we're going to have which is different. In addition, we're going to be having the services of the health department. The health department is going to be um, partnering with us and um, they'll be doing testings. The, the, there are some things that um, like farmers are more at risk with. Um, getting maybe because you have to in some cases be around animals, there can be accidents, um, you're working with tools, they can skin abrasions and so on. And so the, the nurses are going to be there um, in that context because um, over a period of time we may need to have our tetanus status checked. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that they'll be there about. And general health checks. You can't do a good job if you're not healthy. And so we're glad to be partnering with the health department to do that kind of thing. I would also say to you that in addition, we, we're also introducing new technology, um, especially in the area of surveillance, um, industry, um, law enforcement, and some other areas have gone into the, 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 the area of using drones, drone technology. It has places in agriculture to it. There's a role for drones in agriculture, especially in surveillance. And we're going to have drone use um, on display. A gentleman is going to be there and um, we'll be able to see how the drones operate. We'll be able to get an appreciation for the kind of image and data that can be captured by drone. Maybe stuff about irrigation, pest, disease, even, you know, things like that. And so we'll be offering to the farming public options, more technology, new advances that can be used if we're really going to further agriculture, if we're going to make it more modern and more sustainable. So I'm really looking forward. It's going to be great. It's going to be exciting. Okay, good. Now, what are some of the produce or the things <laughs> that you will have on display? We will have a lot of, basically, it's, it's, it's another occasion to showcase local. Mm -hmm. The produce that people are going to see there, that you're going to be able to admire, that you're going to be able to purchase, or maybe even win as a free gift, um, a stuff that are produced locally. Um, we, we have, the snapper is going to be there, which is um, the, 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 um, the, 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 the fish entity in, in the Connery area, I mean, I think by now we're very familiar with, with the, the kind of 
world-class technology where one is more or less like training, moving like saltwater species gradually into a, a freshwater context and um, that is going to be there. It, it is something which, which is um, it, very, very innovative. Um, it's, it's something that first world countries are trying to do and we have been able to succeed in doing that here and again that is going to be unsure and we hope that some well-meaning investor could be around to help to take that into commercial stages. In addition to that, we're going to have our normal produce um, from the ground, be it melons, pumpkin, sweet potato, what have you. The farmers are going to bring their produce. They usually bring for sale the average of their produce, and sometimes you have unsure the superior ones. So we're going to have that um, meat cuts. From, from the livestock end, we're also going to have varying types of animals. So especially for the children, um, give them an opportunity to get up close to a cattle, to a pig, to a sheep, to the different types of birds. We're accustomed to fowls, but so, you know, it's good for them to know that there are other types of poultry, mm -hmm. ducks, peacocks, what have you. So um, we're gonna have a whole range of them on display and therefore the, 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 the viewing public will have an opportunity to discuss for us to see, get an idea of what we have, um, the range of things we have, and what we intend to do with them. We'll also take in their ideas, their suggestions, because that is very important, feedback from the general public. While it is really about agriculture, focusing on agriculture, um, we're also going to have entertainment. Mm -hmm. We're also going to have entertainment because you know, you're looking at stuff, um, sometimes you want to take a five, you want to take a break. So there'll be music for, for the adults and there'll be games and so on for the children. So that um, everyone is going to be able to have an opportunity. There's educational stuff for the, for the school children, for the, for the homemaker, for the, for the adult. It's going to be a day packed of activities. So um, we're really looking forward to that. I understand that you'll have New Vibes Band, King Lala, Fable and Urban, Sankofa, Maccabi, and much more. And they will be backed up by the Limitless Band. Well, and we didn't put it all because it's, it's just one it flyer. It's much more. It's much more. It's a lot more. It's a lot more. Um, we really, it, over the two days, we intend to be able to cater for all of the different categories. We also have DJs who are going to be at different locations on the ground. So as you move through, there will not be a dull moment. Later in the afternoons, we have the bands, you know. So um, in addition to that kind of entertainment, um, for the children, we have puzzles. We, we have games where you can guess things, where you can match, try to know. We will find out if you know the different type of plants. Because, you know, sometimes we call a lot of things trees. We want to see if you know, to distinguish between a breadfruit and maybe a guava and that kind of stuff. And it will be done in, in a light-hearted way. There's also going to be the, the mechanical bull. Um, a lot of kids find it exciting. <laughs> so that's all of that. Then there, there's the song portions where we just mentioned all of these different acts. Very popular persons, very entertaining individuals. There's the bands. Um, the, we have a bar as well, well-stocked bar. Uh, we don't intend to run out over the period of two days. So that we're really looking forward to all of St. Kitts to be there. And we've catered for you. And we promise you that you would not be disappointed. You'll get the best of agriculture and the best of entertainment. Right. So we have spoken a lot about Open Day. Now let us look at agriculture in context. And it is a department, of course, yeah, yes. and you are the director, and you are quite aware that there are challenges that we have to agriculture at your department and the wider context. What are some of those local challenges? If you, if you would permit me, Mr. Williams, um, <laughs> just, just before I, I get into the, the question, answering your question, I'd just like to take one minute and just 
although I've said a lot about Open Day, I would just want to wrap up one last thing to encourage the, 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 the public that we also have a, a raffle for um, Open Day. Mm -hmm. We're raffling a prize ball, a high quality Holstein ball. The, the chance, each chance is $5. And, you know, we encourage you to take a chance. You invest in $5 to win a ball which values almost $2,000. So, um, again, that is entertainment, excitement. It's an opportunity for you to, all the money you spend on, on, on that day is a chance for you to recover it. Sure. So, I mean, again, wonderful. But now, shall we speak a bit about some of the many issues? Because... Um, Agriculture is certainly not without its challenges. There, there are several. Um, I'll perhaps mention one or two at this time. Um, one of the one of one of one of the um, issues that I would like to bring to the fore, um, I would say that um, perhaps we we can begin by looking at things like prairie lastly. Um, it's really a big issue for farmers. And um, that's something that you can't say enough about. I, I, it it really be it'd be so much nicer if and I, it seems to be a Caribbean problem, you know, where you you produce and then someone comes and take your produce. It 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 is it's a terrible thing. Um, it still exists and it's something that that really has so much negative impacts on a farmer. You've, you've, you've invested and then you can't really see the returns for your investment. That is an issue. One of the other negatives sometimes, especially with small stock, has to do with um, dog attacks. Something that we're working on and we believe that we're beginning to get some control over. But some of the more major widespread things include things like water availability. Um, especially over the last two or so years, W the need and, and for water, um, the, the challenges have become so much more real. We took a lot for granted in the past. Now, um, I think even the, the, the persons in charge of water, they have to factor us in. They have to see us as one of the, the major users of water. And um, we, in the policy, in the, in the water policy, we have to be catered for agriculture because um, there is no way that you can produce without water. Um, water for domestic purposes, for tourism, fine. But agriculture also must have water. But we too, once we receive the water, we have to be cognizant about efficiency. Um, we can't just go like the, the very old time technology. Obviously we can't do flood irrigation. You wouldn't, the water wouldn't get to you. But overhead sprinkle is, is something of, ought to be something of the past. We need to be thinking about things like where, where, where the water goes directly to the root, like for example, drip irrigation and that kind of you know advanced technology. So those are some of the things that we really need to be able to put our hands on in, in a very efficient way if we're going to be able to utilize our resources properly. Um, Mr. Williams, I could just go on and on and on about issues. <laughs> what about the monkeys? I mean. We have a monkey problem. <laughs> yes, let's let, let's talk <laughs> about monkeys. I, I don't believe that you can complete an agricultural program without um, addressing monkeys, and I'm sure that our public out there, that I'm sure that is one. Of, they probably would have liked to begin the program on on that on that issue. And let us admit it's 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 a national problem. Um, they affect homeowners. They affect tourism. Now we even seen them along the roadsides, you know. Um, they're, they're everywhere. And I tell you, farming is significantly devastated, significantly impacted because of the presence and prevalence of monkeys. We, the traditional methods that we have employed include trapping. Um, we have tried to do trapping. I would like to let the public know that this year we will certainly intensify our trapping program. Uh, we have contracted some a trapping firm, as it were, an individual who has access to others. And the idea is to really go do massive, large-scale trapping island-wide. We believe that we have to bring the numbers down. 
I, I should say to you that some studies have been done in the past to try and determine the number of um, monkeys that we have in St. Kitts. I'm a little hesitant to reveal the data because the average person, whenever you say to them <laughs> that, they, they say, no, that is a joke. Um, our first result, our first studies indicated that we had about 15,000 monkeys in St. Kitts. And most people said, no, the ratio is supposed to be um, one person to about four or five monkeys. In other words, they think that we should have over 100 and something thousand. That, that, that is the general view. But the studies that was done indicated far less. Be it as it may, we have a problem mm -hmm. with um, the, the, the damage to crops and so on. So trapping in itself has not really brought all of the results. So we're going to intensify. We, we have other, th other plans as well. And all ideas that comes to, fo to the mind are welcome. Things like encircling your property with live wire, fine. If that's possible, that helps. That's a deterrent. Um, but we still want management. We still want a reduction in the numbers. Um, there has been research, work, and discussions about um, sterility techniques. Um, we have also brought in um, noisemakers, which we expect to irritate them and keep them away. And uh, other things. Um, for example, there's a suggestion of something like um, a natural park, theme park area. All of those the, the ministry views favorably because it's, it's a, a problem which we need to address, which we're trying to get a handle on, and we don't yet have the perfect answer. But I want to show everyone that we continue to work assiduously to, to arrest this problem and all the good suggestions that we can get are welcome. Now, what about monkey on the menu? For open At day. open day. <laughs> Would you have monkey on the menu? Tree mutton. Tree mutton. No, no, no. Yeah, Tree mutton let's, 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 right? let's, 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 let's be mild and modest <laughs> to, to this species. Um, Tree mutton. You know, I said to people that... Is that a euphemism? Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, some persons, if, if, you, if you look um, in most of the region, yeah, um, people are very comfortable with their, with their wild meat. Um, Trinidad, Grenada, even Montserrat. Montserrat, they have, they have um, the iguana yes. and um, Dominica, you know. Kittishans, we're amongst those who are a little hesitant to really embrace our, our wild meat. But um, Open Day is one of those occasions where it's on, it's on sale. And um, it usually gets very good responses. And we had it in the past. And it is going to be available again on, on this occasion. So I want to encourage us to, to sample it. To sample it, see, it's, it's not very different, the, the name tells you, Tree Mountain. It, it gives you an idea what to expect. And, um, you know, the, the, as is wisely said, if we, if we embrace that more, that in itself begins to be a measure of control. And so, um, whether we want to consume it ourselves, whether we want maybe to have it fed to other livestock, maybe dogs, it, uh, that has been suggested a lot. Um, that that's an option that we should consider it's going to be there in fact some some church festivals they, they have it a lot and it moves very quickly so um mr williams um mm -hmm. I, I sense that you you would want to to know whether it's there <laughs> um i want to encourage you not to eat all for yourself um take your, your full share and leave some for others okay